welcome to my channel. In this video, I will speak about the inflammatory bowel diseases or IBDs in horses. IBDs are a group of diseases characterized by dysfunction of the gastrointestinal tract with maldigestion and malabsorption. The difference is that maldigestion is impaired breakdown of nutrients while malabsorption is the defective uptake by the intestinal mucosa. This dysfunction is caused by infiltration of mucosa and submucosa with different types of inflammatory cells. And based on the types of inflammatory cells, there are three principal types of IBDs. So if the infiltrates are based on eosinophils, we speak of the eosinophilic enterocolitis. If these infiltrates are present also in different organs, such as the liver, lungs and skin, we speak of multisystemic eosinophilic epiteliotropic disease. When there is formation of granulomas in the mucosa of the intestine, we speak of granulomatous enteritis. If the infiltrates are lymphocytes and plasma cells, then we speak of lymphoplasmatic enterocolitis. And in dogs, this leads to development of lymphosarcoma, and it's believed that this is the case also in horses. Clinical signs are quite unspecific: weight loss, dependent edema due to the low proteins, lethargy, diarrhea, and colic. Colic in horses with IBD is usually a mild spasmodic colic caused by abnormal fermentation in the large intestine due to the decreased absorption of nutrients, in particular carbohydrates, in the small intestine. It usually requires medical treatment, but sometimes the gut distension can progress to displacement or torsion, and sometimes these infiltrates can cause stenosis of a segment of the intestine the so-called mural bands in uh, eosinophilic enterocolitis. Just the colic pain can also be severe and necessitate surgery. So in conclusion, there are no clinical signs that are specific of IBD and these signs can be associated also with many other diseases. So in the workup for, of a horse in which we suspect IBD, we have first to exclude the most common causes of weight loss, uh, diarrhea and colic. First of all, we have to check the diet, rule out dental diseases, revise the warming treatment and perform fecal accounts. We have to run some blood work to rule out other diseases such as hepatic and renal diseases. We can also perform the sun sedimentation test uh, as sun will also cause inflammation of the intestine and possibly colic and diarrhea. We can run some fecal PCR or culture of the uh, fecal material uh, to identify any bacterial causes of diarrhea. Revising the history of the horse, we can check if there has been a previous administration of non-steroidal anti-inflammatories that can predispose the horse to right dorsal colitis and to use again colic and diarrhea. If there is IBD, sometimes at the rectal exam we can palpate thickness of intestinal walls. Um, sometimes we can also find the large lymph nodes at the mesentery. And as clinical signs of IBD are also compatible with the presence of an neoplastic process, with the rectal exam we may uh, find abdominal masses. During the workup of a suspected case of IBD, we have also to perform an abdominal synthesis to rule out peritonitis and as one of the differential is also a neoplasia, we may find the plastic cells in the peritoneal fluid. At the abdominal ultrasound, we may find increased thickness of the walls of small intestine or altered motility. 
with the gastroscopy and in the picture here you can see the pylorus with an ulcerated nodular lesion in front. We can check for gastric ulceration, presence of neoplasias, but through the gastroscope we can also perform a duodenal biopsy. So we can take a sample from the first portion of the small intestine in a less invasive way compared with the surgical approach. The rectum is the other portion of the gastrointestinal tract to which we can have access in a non-invasive way. So with the rectal biopsies we may reach the diagnosis of IBD, but there are some considerations because a small amount of inflammatory cells can be even normal. For example, neutrophils are normal in a small amount into the lamina propria, but should not be present in the epithelium and feet. So when neutrophils are found in these locations, they are always pathologic. Lymphocytes and plasma cells are also normal infiltrates in the lamina propria of the rectum, but the hypercellularity is abnormal. They are increasing in number not only with IBD, but every time that there is an inflammatory process, so also with parasitism or, for example, with the neoplasia. Eosinophils are also normal in the lamina propria and submucosa of the rectum, but if they are found around vessels, organized as granuloma or in an increased number, they can be pathologic. But again, they can be found in an increased number also with parasitism and neoplasias. As these diseases predominantly affect the small intestine, glucose absorption tests may be diagnostic. It consists in the administration of glucose through a nasogastric tube or with a sugar meal and measurements of blood glucose in the following hours. In healthy horses, there is an increase of more than 85% over the baseline at 620 minutes. If there is partial malabsorption, there is an increase but of less than 85% over the baseline. If the malabsorption is complete, there is absolutely no increase over the baseline. Nuclear scintigraphy has been proposed as a method to uh, reach the diagnosis of IBD, but is rarely used. Surgery, uh, both with laparotomy or laparoscopy, can be diagnostic to take samples of the affected portion of the intestine and can also be curative if the segment of intestine affected is very localized. For the treatment, these are the main categories of treatment of IBDs. So a highly digestible and palatable diet is recommended with a high uh, content of fiber and very low content of carbohydrates. Some authors also suggested to use gluten-free diets because uh, an hypothesis is that some of the horses with IBD may present a similar disease to the celiac disease in humans. Example of a good diet is grass hay with oats and corn oil to give an extra source of energy. Until mintics are recommended because even a low number of parasites can cause ongoing intestinal inflammation in these patients. So we can perform a frequent fecal count and the warming treatment. In the past, some authors recommended a, a daily the warmer, but there are concerns that this will just cause uh, the development of until mintic resistance and will not be of any benefit. Anyway, the treatment of choice for IBD are corticosteroids. Usually they should be administered initially intravenously or intramuscular because if the intestine is inflamed, probably uh, an oral administration will not be effective. But then the treatment can be continued orally, especially because the treatment can be quite prolonged or even for all the life of the horse. 
Other treatments that have been suggested include the use of metronidazole to balance microbial flora and for its anti-inflammatory properties, hydroxyurea that is used for the eosinophilic syndrome in humans, and probiotics. It's not known if probiotics will work or not in horses and it's also not known if they are completely harmless. Anyway, their mechanism of action include the modulation of the innate and acquired immune system. They can also alter the perception of pain and the gastrointestinal motility. They can produce substances with antimicrobial properties and they can inactivate bacterial toxins. They can also eliminate some pathogen bacteria just by competitive exposure. The fecal microbiota transplant is also another treatment that needs further investigation. The psyllium is used for the right dorsal colitis and fund enteropathy and may have an application also in IBD cases. And surgery, as I said, if the disease is focal, surgical resection may be curative. Well, prognosis is really very poor for all the types of IBDs. Even if there is an improvement uh, initially with the treatment with corticosteroids, the treatment can be lifelong and horses can also develop more problems associated with the adverse effects of corticosteroids and there can be still a recurrence of the disease. Now, this slide is not based on literature but just on clinical experience of different clinicians which agree on the fact that possibly another type of inflammatory bowel disease may exist. In these cases, the inflammation may be secondary to bronchitis, parasites, viral or bacterial infection, or severe colic. If we perform biopsies, we may find the same uh, inflammatory infiltrates of the IBDs, but just because, as I mentioned before, these cellular infiltrates are common every time that there is an inflammation. But these cases will actually respond very well to adjustment of the diet and the short course of anti-inflammatories until complete resolution and use they have a very good prognosis. There is no name for this type of disease as it's not described in the literature. The unhappy eye gut syndrome is the term that Ben Sykes is using to describe these cases. And that's all. I hope that it was clear. If you liked the video, press like. And if you have any questions, leave a comment below this video and I will try to reply you. See you next time. Bye!